I want to talk about the sort of the responsibility of representation. And you guys are both playing lead characters who aren't particularly well represented on television. And I'm curious what kind of responsibility that comes with as as actors, as creators in your case. You know what's interesting is when we were doing the show, I never really thought about this stuff. What was interesting about the show coming out on Netflix is like everyone watched every episode <laughs> in one weekend. <laughs> and this reaction was like, oh my God, I've never seen Indian people or Asian people or African American lesbian woman. Uh, I've never seen these people depicted in this way, like normal people and not like... I don't know, I think a lot of times if you see an Indian guy or an Asian guy, they're fitting into certain tropes and you never see like an Asian guy who's capable with women or anything like that. Mm. I heard this thing that uh, Lee Daniels said one time and I think it was probably one of these kind of things where he said something about white writers writing for this round black table. performers and how it was like in, it. In, insulting. And I was like, wow, I've never really thought about that. And a lot of times when people write for Indian actors or Asian actors or anybody, someone different, it is insulting because they have a certain... Uh, view of, oh, this is how that person can help our plot. You know, I mean, the most mm. basic thing mm-hmm. being like, oh, well, this Indian guy, let's put him in the cab or in the mart. Like, let's not make him the guy who's this woman's love interest mm-hmm. or something like that. Let's get the white guy for that, of course. Of course. You know? What's wrong with Short Circuit 2? They got a white guy to play an Indian guy? With the, ro- the Robo movie? With Johnny Five? Wait, you don't know this? Wait, which Indian guy are you talking about? Dude. That guy's a white guy. The robot or the Indian? The Indian guy is a white guy. That's Fisher Stevens. They use brown face makeup. Wait, what? Yeah, they got a real robot and a fake Indian. So I think with our show, it worked out in this great way where we were just being true to ourselves and writing things that were just re- very true to us. I really believe the idea that the most personal things end up being the most universal. There is relationship stuff yeah. we did where I took very, very specific things and people were like, yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah. You should have, yeah. You should have put that in there. That's, yeah. that, that's that got weight. a little too yeah. real. Yeah. I got yeah. into a fight with my girlfriend because mm-hmm. of uh-huh. that scene. Who has taught you the most about being funny on screen? Um, I would say definitely uh, Amy Poehler, not only just in terms of comedic acting, but just as far as being a leader on set and just was our leader in so many ways, just ran that show with such class. I was always in awe of her and, and stole whatever wisdom I can. But everyone in that cast, there was just such a wide variety of different types of uh, comedic talent, Robin included. And um, I feel like I just learned so much from watching all these different amazing performers and their different styles, and uh, it was a it was a treat to mm. to work on the show and, and learn from all those people. Mm. What do you wish you knew about success in this business when you were first starting out? And would you do anything differently, knowing what you know now? I think the thing I've learned and, and still have to keep reminding myself of even now is is that you kind of have to make your own way. And and for me, I felt like writing my own stuff, especially with Master of None, like no one Mm. would have given me a show like that. No one would have believed I could have done that. It would have definitely have gone to some white guy. (laughs) You know, I mean, I I just don't think they would have given it to me. And I think it's easy sometimes to kind of just sit around and wait for an opportunity and wait for someone to open a door. But I think if you look at people that have really done interesting stuff, they're people that make their own doors all the time and then hopefully something opens. And I have to always remind myself of that, to always Mm -hmm. just make your own way and, and write your own stuff. There was a long time where I didn't realize I had money that I could spend. <laughs> you know, I was still kind of living like a college kid or like a young stand-up. Yeah. And then one afternoon, I was hanging out with uh, with Louis C.K. We had uh, brunch together, and then he wanted me to look at something he was working on at his house. And I was like, all right, should we grab a cab? He's like, no, no, I, I can drive. And he has this, like, nice Porsche. And we went in the Porsche on the West Side Highway, and then we went to his apartment. He had this nice apartment. I'm like, is Louis, like, trying to fuck me or something? Like, this is, this is, I'm getting wined and dined here. This is very nice. And then I was like, why the fuck am I not doing this? I tour. I do fucking theater. <laughs> I be doing this. What am right. I doing? Like he like he was like I bought this nice like record player. And I was oh, like I want to buy nice things. That's and nice. then I it like clicked in my head. I was like I should start spending some of this money. <laughs> like, like, I'm touring all the time and mm-hmm. not spending any of it. Any of it. Right. Yeah. yeah.